Testing, one, two. Happy New Year, and welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm Jessie Laughlin, and it's my privilege to serve as the Director of Lifespan Religious Education here at UUCP. We, as a congregation, strive to live out our mission to embrace freedom, love inclusively, grow in mind, body, and spirit, and help to heal our world. We are unapologetically progressive in welcoming people of all ethnicities, races, sexual orientations, and gender identities, social and economic situations, and different abilities. We advocate for human rights. We strive to be good stewards of the earth. In living our mission, we recognize the network of relationships of which we are a part. This is the ancestral land of the Peoria people. They and other nations were here long before the first European settlers came down the Illinois River. We honor the Peoria people for who they were and for who they are today. Thank you for joining us in person and online, it is an act of courage to seek connection to and larger purpose in this age, and we welcome you. If you're new, please help us get to know you by staying and visiting in the Zoom room or after coffee hour or after worship for coffee hour and fellowship hall. All of us are welcome in whatever way we show up today. Know that you belong here. Please take a moment to check your phone. Make sure it's turned to worship mode. That would be silent or vibrant. Our slides might help you navigate that process or ask a neighbor if you need help. Ours is a church bustling with activity. Be sure to look through the announcements in your order of worship. Watch the slides that we put on the screens. Check out our bulletin board, read your Friday email, the UU News, or the monthly newsletter, The Builder. I would like to go ahead and highlight just a couple of things going on in our church this month. Next Sunday for Martin Luther King Day weekend, we'll be doing a community service project and all ages are invited to participate. We're taking donations at a bin in the foyer, or you can show up on Sunday next week and help us assemble care kits for unhoused Peorians. A little bit later in the month, we've got some fun and we're planning a group to go to the Riverman game. See Tim Harold if you would like to purchase tickets or our various communications for his email. And finally, on January 27th, I'm very excited about the vision and vitality session that we're planning here at UUCP. We need your information, your ideas, your passions to help us know which direction the church should go in. Please plan on spending the day with us on Saturday, January 27th, and RSVP ahead of time so we can have childcare and lunch ready for you. Today's worship is focused on the proposed changes of Article 2 of the UUA bylaws. It feels like a very UU thing to be doing a sermon about bylaws. And 
I promise it's more exciting than it might seem. As we'll soon hear, the heart of that change is a deep rooting in our philosophy of liberating love. So to help us set that tone, I ask you now to please rise in body or spirit as you're able and join me in singing the opening hymn, There is a Love. Thank you. I invite Jean Burke up for our opening words. Good morning. The opening words today are Love and Justice from Reverend Tess Baumberg, Baumberger. And this is based on 1 Corinthians, so it may sound a little familiar. Love is kind with people but impatient with just injustice. Love is assertive and respectful. Love listens to, to the anger of those who experience oppression without responding, without defending, without interrupting, without explaining. It listens with compassion, seeking always to understand. Love is slow to anger, especially at the start and end of life and with anyone who the world discounts. Yet anger can be a part of love. Consider the force with which parents <laughs> defend their young. Love fears for those it loves, for what it loves. When who or what it loves cannot defend itself, love rises to defend. When those it loves have the power of defense, it takes their lead with humility and courage. Love assists empowers and frees. Love's anger rises to meet injustice in considered ways that help correct it. Love is willing to examine itself, its thoughts, actions, and unmediated bias. It recognizes one's power to harm or to be part of systems of harm, with or without awareness, but once aware, it can only intend to make amends, to right the wrongs, to change the systems that legislate hatred. Love is willing always to change, always to learn, always to heal. Love rejoices in truth and in equity. There is no limit to love's steady presence or its holding us gently but insistently to what is right. I would now like to invite the Smezerug family to light the chalice. Love is the Spirit of the Church by James Villa Blake. Love is the Spirit of this Church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another.
angels is still when the song of the angels is still when the song of the angels is still the work of christmas begins when the star in the heavens is gone when the star in the heavens is gone when the star in the heavens is gone all oh, the Thank you for that. Our hearts hold many joys and concerns. Part of being in community is sharing those so others can be uplifted with us in times of celebration and help us bear the weight in times of sorrow. In a moment, I'll light the candles in front of us and all are invited to come up and light your own flame, one of love, of good wishes, of hope, of sadness. These collective flames acknowledge each week that the situations in our lives may vary, but our shared light provides a beacon for our path.
spirit of community in which we find and share strength and common purpose, we turn our minds and hearts toward one another, seeking to bring into our circle of care and concern all who need love and support, those who are ill, those who are in pain, either in body or in spirit, those who are lonely, those who have been wronged. We bring into our circle of care those who know joy, who are celebrating milestones, anniversaries, accomplishments. We bring into our circle all that is in our life. We offer in this moment an honoring of memory from B.J. Lindsay, honoring the memory of her mother, Leslie Dobbins, who died January 5th, 2004. <coughs> also honoring the memory of their longtime close friend, Eric King, who was born January 6th, January 8th, 1968, and died in 2023. We hold in our circle all the names, all the milestones, all that it is before us and around us in this moment. And we offer in this gathering for the new year, in this first Sunday, recognition from Reverend Erica Hewitt. This is the season of endings and beginnings, when the small signs of dawn pierce through the night and something new is born. But first comes the waiting. First comes the lessons of endings and beginnings, the presence of life with the sheltering spirit of love, grieves with those sweeping up the debris of loss, waits with those who restlessly seek out change, grants us courage in the night to guard each other's dreams for this holy, wondrous universe. Grant us, O oh universe, unfolding in mystery a sense of your timing. May we loosen our grip on that which doesn't serve us, leaving behind that which we have outworn and outgrown. Teach us the lessons of beginnings. Remind us that such waitings and endings may be a starting place, a planting of seed which brings birth to what is ready to be born something just right and just and different. A new song, a deeper relationship, a fuller love. Let's hold for one more moment and breathe together. Shalom, salam, blessed be. And I invite Regina Ford to offer our story for today. of hurt and unfairness, of anger and sadness, when the sun disappears and the skies grow dark. And I see there is fear. I ask myself, 
What can I do to help let the light back in? I put my hands on my heart and listen. And that is where I find the answer. I have compassion. I act with tenderness. I am love. I can listen and not say a word. I can be there. Love is being present. I can hug and hold and say everything will be all right. Love is comfort. I can speak softly and choose my words and actions carefully. Love is gentle. I can give thanks for all I have and am able to share. Love is gratitude. I can keep my mind and body safe and healthy. Love is taking care of me. I can express what's important to me. Love is creative. I can know no one is perfect. Love is understanding. I can do my best to make things better when something is wrong. Love is effort. I can celebrate those I've loved before. Love is remembering. I can find goodness in a kind word, a helping hand, or a shared smile. Love is tiny gestures. I can breathe in the air that the whole world shares and know all creatures are made from the very same stardust. Love is connection. When the clouds roll in for others and for me, I know now there is something I can do. I can let my heart lead the way. I am love. You are love. We are love. And with love, we will weather the storm and light up the sky together. I wonder, what can you do to help let the light back in? I wonder, how are you, love? And now the children, youth, and their instructors are dismissed to religious education for the morning, and the rest of us will sing them out to go now in peace. It's always so fun with me, for me when I get to be here after that song. Shakes things up. <sighs> it is the collective gifts that make it possible for us all to be here today. Those offerings of service, of care, and money of, of the past lead a direct line into our lives and into this sanctuary today. Whether it's our first Sunday that you're visiting, or if you've been here for generations, we receive the gifts and contribute our own for our sake and for that of our children. What we gather together is passed forward to the people that we'll never meet. 
it is good to make an offering when we meet in worship. We do practice sharing our plate here. One third of our undesignated offering from the Sunday collection is donated to a local non-for-profit that rotates every month. Two thirds goes to support this church. Please use the envelopes in the pews if you wish to designate a pledge or a different use of your contribution. There is also a QR code in the order of service or a link in the chat on Zoom and Facebook. This month's Share the Plate recipient is Lula NFP. They're an outreach team providing harm reduction services to unhoused folks. Items such as food, temporary shelter, clothing, sleeping blankets, Bags, blankets, bus passes are all crucial for people living outside or in tent encampments. All have experienced significant trauma in their lives, and most suffer with some form of mental illness. Lula provides assistance in navigating available resources, such as housing and medical care. Will the ushers please come forward and pass the plates? For this next part, I'd like to invite Reverend Gianni Foliano to provide some insight into their journey with Article 2 so far. Gianni became a member in at, <laughs> Gianni became a member of UUCP in 2014 and has worked at the Unitarian Universalist Association since 2018, serving as project manager to the Commission on Institutional Change and Article 2 Study Commission. In July, they were promoted to manager and strategist of equity, belonging, and change within the office of the president. They are also a local community activist and founding member and organizer of Peoria Proud. Good morning, everyone. So honored to be here with you all to share a little bit about my journey uh, with the Article 2 process. It's uh, been such a pleasure to be a part of this congregation and a part of this living tradition in this work. To give a little background before we get to my journey, in 1961, the American Universalist Church and the American Unitarian Association merged uh, in uh, 1961. Uh, in that process, Article 2 was established, Article 2 of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Article 2 defines the purpose of the association and the objectives or principles or covenant of our association. In 1961, our current seven principles were known as six objectives, not principles themselves, but goals that the association set that we would work towards collectively. 
In the 1980s, the women's movement within Unitarian Universalism took issue with the very masculine dominated language within the six objectives of the Unitarian Universalist Association. During that movement, there was a push uh, to amend Article 2 and gave forth the seven principles in 1985. In 1998, the General Assembly of the Unitarian Universalist Association, made up of delegates of our congregations, voted to require that we have a regular review of Article 2, the purpose and goals of our association, that would require that we review this process every 15 years. In 2016, we finally get to my story and my engagement with Article 2. I was a, a delegate for our congregation at the Columbus General Assembly when I was first introduced to the Eighth Principle. The Eighth Principle was a movement with a, a grassroots movement within our congregations to add a, an additional principle to our seven that would make a commitment to anti-racism and anti-oppressive efforts. At that time, I was also approached about amending our second source. At that time, the second source was identified as the prophetic voices of women and men, which left out non-binary members of our community. In 2017, again, I was a delegate for our congregation in New Orleans, where I had the honor to second the vote to amend our, uh, the second source of Article 2 to change from women to men to people. That source was adopted by a, ma va a, a mass majority of the delegates present, present at General Assembly. At that General Assembly also, there was discussion about the eighth principle and adopting it, but there was also a discussion about amending the first principle, the inherent worth and dignity of all people. The question there was to amend from people to beings in honoring the creatures that live amongst us, that all beings, animals included, are inherent and worthy. There was a complication between those two narratives, the eighth principle and the first principle. Do we change the first principle to all beings when we still are not honoring the inherent worth and dignity within our own communities of the people here? At that point, the Board of Trustees of the Unitarian Universalist Association no, realizing that it would be a very tough conversation that needed more dialogue outside of just that General Assembly, moved to appoint an Article II study commission as the bylaws require. In 2018 and 2019, the Board of Trustees had a general conference during General Assembly where delegates were asked questions related to our mission, our principles, and our vision for the future and what we needed, what was missing in our principles and purpose statement as it was. Through that insight from delegates, the Board of Trustees appointed the Article II Study Commission in 2020. I had the honor in 2018 and 2019 to work with the Board of Trustees and the Commission on Institutional Change and in coordinating that, that, that general conference and collecting the, the information and providing it to the board and developing their charge to the Article II Study Commission in 2020. That charge called for the commission to root their work in love and anti-racism and anti-oppression. In 2021, after the Article II Study Commission gave their initial uh, report to the General Assembly about the work that they had done to that point, the General Assembly adopted a responsive resolution to their report, calling on the Article II Study Commission to ensure that the principles of the Eighth Principle were included in the final recommendation from the Article II Study Commission. Between 2020 and 2022, I supported the Article II Study Commission in uh, providing 45 different feedback sessions where we had over 4,600 participants giving uh, feedback about what they saw as the vision and purpose of our association. 
We conducted 29 surveys over that time period and had nearly 11,000 responses to the Commission's questions. In 2023, we prepared a report for the General, for the General Assembly and the Board of Trustees that included the proposal to amend the Article 2 uh, as it's written and was presented at General Assembly for a, an amendment process. The delegates and Unitarian Universalists around the country and around the world were able to participate in an amendment process to recommend ideas for how to change the proposal and finally to vote on those amendments at General Assembly. The General Assembly did vote to pass some amendments and finally voted on the proposal as amended passing by 86%. With the amendments, the Article II Study Commission went back to work to incorporate the amendments that were passed by General Assembly and presented its final proposal for this General Assembly to the, the Board of Trustees in November. This coming June, we have an opportunity to send delegates to vote on this final proposal. And within the next few weeks, there are amendments that are being discussed that require 15 congregations to sign on to amend the pro final proposal that's being presented at this General Assembly. Any amendments that get 15 uh, uh, congregations sponsoring them will be placed on the agenda at General Assembly and require three-fourths vote to be added to the final proposal. The final proposal will take place at General Assembly after the amendment process and require two-thirds votes of the delegates to be adopted as our new purpose and covenant of, between our congregations. I invite you to join me in on this journey as delegates and to let love guide us in this process. I invite you now to rise in body and spirit for hymn 131, Love Will Guide Us. I want to thank Reverend Gianni Foliano for that summation of where we've been and where we're headed. We are uniquely advantaged to have somebody who's been such a part of the process. So thank you for sharing with us this morning.
So when the American Unitarian Association and the Universalist Church of America merged into the UUA, it didn't happen easily. There was a lot of conversation, as you might imagine. Discussions, meetings that ran long, and emotions that ran high. But in the end, they did settle on some common ground and sign the shared constitution and bylaws. We have taken that and it has changed with us over the years. And as was mentioned, we are called back to look and see what changes are needed for our future. There's so much involved. It's not happening willy-nilly. We are part of the process. So let's dive in together this morning. I'd like to spend some time wondering what it might mean to us here at UUCP if the delegates do adopt the changes in June at our General Assembly. I'd like to also explore what it is that this proposed revision says and highlight some of the new things you'll find inside, such as what does it mean to put love at the center of our faith? Why is there a covenant calling us to action in this document? I also hope to shine a light on how our current version, the seven principles that some of us know and love, is still here. It is fully present in this document. And finally, I would like to extend an invitation to all who would like to know more, maybe even get involved in the process, to become a delegate, to look at the proposed amendments. Um, you can join me and Reverend Jennifer in the conference room after service. Childcare will be provided. Um, and additionally, we're always available and happy to talk. First and foremost, we should know that congregational polity is not altered in this document at all. We will still be UUCP. Congregational polity is a lot of syllables that say that each UUA congregation can handle its own leadership, our own finances. We establish our own statements of purpose and covenants within and without our congregation. This is affirmed in a separate section of the bylaws, so you won't see it in this section, but know that it's still there. We will continue on, but with some updated tools to describe our faith, both for ourselves and as we tell others about it. Within your order of worship today, you've received a handout of the final proposed revision to Article 2 that was completed by the Article 2 Study Commission in October of this past year. I encourage you to keep that handout with you and spend some time with it in a quiet moment later this week. Think about what it might mean to you. Does that document describe your faith? Would it be a good way for you to talk to others about our shared faith? So let's turn to the inside of that handout and the slide with an image of the bylaws, or an image of the shared UU values. Adding an image to bylaws is a change from the previous version for sure, but the study commission felt it was very helpful in illustrating the intention of the values and covenant section. This is an image of a chalice with an overlay of the word love over the flame. Six outstretched arms create a circle around each of the core values and form a six-petal flower shape. Each arm 
is a different color. And clockwise, they are interdependence, orange, equity, red, transformation, purple, pluralism, blue, generosity, green, and justice, yellow. Section C2.2 of the bylaws state, love is the power that holds us together. And it is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. What does that mean, through the spiritual discipline of love? I am certain that those with far more training than I have and experience could spend many, many sermons on that phrase alone. And yet, it is quite simple. Like in the story Regina told, I am love. We can act in so many ways that is driven by love. And the love that we add to our actions makes those actions all the more meaningful, all the more impactful. For me, it has been centering to put love at the heart of my UU values. Interdependence rooted in love has a much deeper meaning than simply the belief that I am a part of the web. The love calls me to do more, to take action, to mend that web. Rooting our faith in love reaches deep into our Unitarian and Universalist histories, where we learn that no one is outside the circle of love that it is our job to simply love our fellow souls on this blue boat that we call home. So branching out from that center of love, we see the petals of the rainbow flower, and inside each one is one of the six named values. As we continue reading that section, we see that those values are verbs. Just like the love at the center is a verb, the document goes on to say that for interdependence, we honor and acknowledge. For pluralism, we celebrate. For justice, we work. For transformation, we adapt. For generosity, we cultivate. And for equity, we declare. A little further under that definition is a covenant that we make because of our shared values. Covenant is Latin, and it means a solemn agreement or promise from the heart regarding a course of action between parties. When we're in covenant with someone or some group, we're acting in the way that we've agreed to. But we understand that living in covenant is aspirational. We understand that we're striving to do these things, and when we miss the mark, as inevitably as humans will, we're able to heal that break and bring our relationship back into covenant. For me, this addition of actions that I'm called to take based on the values that I affirm helps me put my faith in action. I'm excited about the roads that can lead out of here. The future looks bright. But what about our past? What about those seven principles? As a religious education teacher, we know the principles. We love the principles. It makes our job have guideposts. But just as you and I grow and change and still remain the person that we've always been, Article 2 can grow and change. Our purposes can grow and change. And still, the heart will remain the same. 
These principles and the proposed eighth principle are all present in this document. This slide has a little summary, and I'm happy to go over it in a better way later. But in the first principle, we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person, and we see that showing up in our shared value of equity. The second principle, affirming our search for justice, equity, and compassion, is seen in the values of justice, equity, and generosity. Acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth is in the values, too, as is a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. The use of the democratic process espoused in the fifth principle shows up when we talk about the value of justice. And one of the principles close to my heart, the seventh, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part, is the value of interdependence. And finally, the proposed eighth principle of journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by our actions to dismantle racism and other oppression is present throughout the entire document. Specifically, it is named in the value of justice. Thank you. While it is true that there are many changes we're being asked to consider, at the heart of these values can be seen as the next iteration of our liberal religious faith. So please, take the handout with you today. Spend some time thinking about what it says, either at noon today in the conference room with Rev. Jennifer Innes and I, or later this week when you have time, and consider how do these words resonate? Do they describe your faith? Would it be a good way to tell other folks what our church stands for? And then, if you want to talk, dive deeper, reach out. I'm here to help connect you to the process, whichever way you're landing on it. Because no matter the outcome of the decision to change Article 2, we can all dedicate our lives to increasing the love in this world. Please rise in body or spirit as you're able and join me in singing hymn 95. There is more love somewhere.
Thank you for your time this morning. I'm going to hand it over to Lindy Peterson for sending our light out. This is Keep the Chalice Flame Burning by Adam Slate. Be kind, be brave, be just, be merciful, be hopeful. This is how we keep the chalice flame burning until we are together again to light it anew. It would have been really cool. May the love that overcomes all differences, heals all wounds, put to flight all fears, that reconciles all who are separated, be in us and among us now and always. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. <laughs>